it feels like being on a Saturday in front of the television. And in Germany, we, would, we have a TV program called Wetten das, very popular. And when that was broadcasted, it wasn't even broadcasted in Germany, it was broadcasted throughout the Germanic region. They always started with that hymn of the European Broadcast Union, if I get it right. And these days, uh, you hear it often when you hear stuff like um, the Eurasian Song Contest and something like that. And I thought that it is appropriate to start my session here at the Pasha Conference with just this hymn. So I'm glad that you're here. And I hope that because it feels like Friday, yeah? I, I know we have Thursday, but we're on the last day of the conference. So I think we need a little bit of fun. But you're here for the information, so let's combine that. Uh, first of all, thanks again for the sponsors. And thanks again that you um, made it possible that we're all here. My name is Thorsten Butz. And I'm always looking for... Um, topics that are fresh, that are new, that are useful in your daily life. And sometimes I'm looking for topics that are simply fun. And today, I think the fun aspect is the more important thing. But you will see um, that I will always give you some, not, of course, I will all, also give you some information related to PowerShell. But the first thing that we have to ask, of course, is about video processing, PowerShell and video processing. Is there a connection? Is there a connecting line between those topics? And let me be honest, not really. But I wouldn't be here if that would be the only truth, if this would be 100%. There is a very small connecting line. And then I think it's absolutely suitable for 30 minutes of information and fun. But um, of course, I have to explain how, how, why do I think about these things? And this has all to do with previous PowerShell conferences. So let me talk a little bit about how it all began. This is, once again, a picture, one random picture from Hanover. And this is what Tobias and all the other guys in charge, all the many helping hands, did it back then. Um, it is not a secret that here in Vienna, the guys uh, on the back of the room from Bernard AV, greetings to them. And um, I hope, I'm very sure they did a great job to improve uh, the video footage that you will sometime later use to recap all the sessions that you liked and to, to watch those sessions that you couldn't find the time for. So I think uh, video recording is very important despite the fact that we're all here to see this event live. But having four tracks means you have to decide. So, of course, it was always desirable that we record the sessions from the different rooms. And so we, Tobias, and the crew did. And as you might see here on this picture, it doesn't look so reliable, right? Because if you record video, that has always been expensive. And when I was younger, um, this was exclusive for um, TV channels, for broadcasting companies. And today, it's getting much more easier. You, you have that ridiculous smartphones that provide quality that is outstanding. So um, today, you can afford to be your own TV program. Um, keyword is YouTube. It's fantastic what people do out there. But it's still pretty unreliable, right? You can make many, 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 many things go wrong. So I came into the game uh, when Tobias found out that video, working on video stuff is not the thing that gives him pleasure because um, things break very often. It's a, a huge amount of work um, in terms of post-processing because one day you recorded it, but then again, you know that from your own pictures, from your, from your photography, you have to sort it. You have to choose what are the best pictures. In terms of video, you have to edit the files and stuff like that. That's a whole, there's so much to do, and it really eats up your time. Um, and there is another aspect. Uh, many of the colleagues here, they really spent a lot of time in preparing these sessions. And 
very often it's important to them. They want to show the world what they found out. And you, maybe you will be contacted on social media. Can you repeat what you just said over there and over there? And then it's very handy. It's very easy to say, yeah, go to my YouTube channel or go to YouTube at all or go to any other platform and just have a look at the video. So from a speaker's perspective, it's very important that this works because all the work that you invested will be broadcasted to a broader audience. So um, as an organizer, one more reason to be, um, to be very careful what you're doing here. So, but video processing and video recording and later on processing, that costs a whole lot of money. So you need some volunteers. And during the last two years, I said, okay, Tobias, I'm going to help you. <laughs> if you want me to help, there were other people um, that also helped Tobias, but uh, I'm here on the stage, so I, I tell you my story. And when you think about video recording, you think about editing video, but you do that for just one video. But think about what changes if you run a conference, if you run a conference like that. You have four tracks at the same time, you have four days, and you have multiple slots every day. So you will have something like 50 to 100 video files, or Maybe you all only have four files, but they contain all the sessions from one room, even worse. Um, but then again, you will find out you don't have the time to edit that in the usual suspect software tools that you might use. Um, there will be no time to post-process that all. And in previous years in PowerShell Conference, we did it. Uh, there were a few people who really edited every single file. So, and now you know why it took weeks until you show, and until these uh, sessions showed up on YouTube. So, and when I took over a, a part of the work, uh, it was totally clear that um, we have to do it fast. We don't care about a single session. We need something um, that we can roll out very fast. So, what came out is that um, and this is also what the people in the back are doing right now. Uh, we mix the video footage live. So actually you could broadcast that if we wanted to be like that. And everything that you will later on, that you will see later on is mixed, um, from the video operator. So if anything goes wrong, if I, for example, run out of the camera, okay, then I'm gone. It's like it is. But this gives you the chance that you simply can post-process the files without watching them. Because again, if I would watch every session, think about it, how long would that take? I can't do that. I'm just watching the first minute and the last minute. That's it. And I don't care about the rest. If something goes wrong, I will hear from your comments on YouTube. So that's the way it is. And what we did is... We had some, some, some problems that you still have to solve. For example, you want a nice jingle. You want something recognizable. Uh, the second thing that you want, when you run, um, when you go to the video platform and you click on play, you want that the speaker starts with his session and you don't want to wait 15 minutes while he's chatting with the audience. So you want to have a starting point, which is exactly the starting point of the session and not the starting point of the recording. So this is quite challenging in terms of post-processing. So how can you do that without editing any single file? I will show you how I uh, did it. And the next thing is that cameras like this, I will show you that in a minute. Um, and this is also true for the tools that we are using here to record this. They create a ridiculous amount of data. You get gigabyte and gigabyte and terabyte and um, you might have the best possible internet, internet line where you're working at, but it really is a problem if every single video file is uh, multiple gigabytes and uh, gigabytes and gigabytes. And it takes so much time to upload them all. So the question is, do we really need that quality? Or can we um, compress the files in a way that you don't care because it looks the same? And I will show you that in a minute. So 
what is the toolbox that we're talking about? I know that many of you are always that are also thinking about recording that. For example, if you run a PowerShell user group, and just because of the coronavirus, you want to, you want to run it remotely, you immediately start thinking about how can I record this? So, and I give you some tools that are important for us. Um, the first thing is that um, you need something to properly record all the different items. Um, this is primarily my, uh, my notebook, what you see right now. It is, of course, the audio, the things that you hear. And the third thing is the camera, which typically is displayed as a little thumbnail. So you have at least three channels, three items that you have to combine. And open broadcaster software, OBS, many of you, I'm sure, will know this, is the perfect choice for that. That's absolutely a pro tool. Anyone uses it. If amateur or pro, it really doesn't matter. It is so mature that it's already getting complicated. So, um, but you can also use, this is just a little quick tip for all those video conferencings like we do today. Uh, you can also use that if you're simply using Teams because you can create virtual cameras with that, and you can do a lot of little playing around with, uh, with OBS. It begins with a green screen. You might remember that Microsoft Teams, for example, didn't, um, uh, didn't always support changing the background, and it does today in a very crappy way. OBS is very much better with that. Uh, you can do a lot of that with that, so you can even use OBS simply for video conferencing. So it's a very interesting piece of software. To me, in terms of post-processing, I have one tool that is very, very important. It is FFmpeg. And FFmpeg is a nightmare. And it's a dream at the same time. And I will focus on FFmpeg right now, you will see. But two more tools. For the, for the average guy, and I, I myself, I use it all the time, um, Camtasia is a, is a professional soft, is, is a, a commercial software. You have to pay for that. But Camtasia is one of the easiest to use solution in terms of recording yourself. So I don't get paid for them, but I tell you I use it and I like to use it. You can also edit stuff with that. So in terms that you have some, let's say some crappy video that despite the fact that you don't want to edit every single video, this one you want to edit. Maybe, maybe something go, uh, uh, something went wrong in, uh, half during the session and you would just want to, to, to clip some items out of that. Then maybe Camtasia is a little bit more handy than doing it all from the command line, line what I saw you, but I will uh, show you in a minute. And the final item that you might not know is a service and, um, again, they don't pay me for that, but I really would like to advertise them. Auphonic, I will show you in a minute, is a service from Austria, which is yeah, nice because we're in Austria right now. You can, it's, it's a freemium thing. Uh, in many cases, you don't need to pay for, uh, for it, but you are a little bit limited. The second you get paid, you can do more. So that's it. And what Auphonic does, I will show you, it's super, super, super important for me. And because uh, Auphonic allows some post-processing of the audio, which is pure magic. I would show you. The first are very, very famous. The first both are very, very famous open source tools. And as I said, the, the other bombs are um, commercial tools. This is FFmpeg. FFmpeg is provided as um, source code only. So they do not really provide executables. You have to compile it yourself. But there are people who compile it on behalf. So you can simply down it, but, but still what we call FFmpeg is just one native command. It's a binary. There are some more tools, FFprobe, for example, I will show you. And the problem with these tools is that this is not mature. It is super mature, super, super, super mature. Uh, if you would tell me FFmpeg is capable of preparing coffee, I'm absolutely fine to believe in that. So I was um, making fun that um, the colleague that explained import module yesterday showed um, a slide with all the parameters of, of import, import Excel, sorry, import Excel. And I thought, I can fight him. 
FFmpeg has much more parameters. But the, the real problem is, this is really black magic. And um, just recently, I talked to, with Tobias about that, and he said um, to, to him, all oh, the video stuff is, it's, oh, everything is black magic, but believe me, FFmpeg is definitely black magic. So it's, it's ridiculous. You, won't, you, don't, you don't want to fight with it, but you do it all the time. Huh? Because it's so, it's such a great tool, such an important tool. But I think we, we, we chatted enough, right? Let's, let's do, uh, let's do some uh, processing. And, um, for those of you who, who were here early, you just saw a little video clip. And I will take this video clip that I show you in a minute. I will take this as an example. What I did is I took the chance and uh, reached out to Tobias on Sunday. So this video is just a few days old. And I said, hey, how are you doing? Let's create a little interview, and this is what you see in a minute. But you will also find out that this video is not perfect. I show you only the first minute and the last 30 seconds, and you will see what I mean. Be, be careful to listen to it. It is not edited. And I can, um, I can claim that I will show you an edited version, an improved version later on. And if you listen carefully, you will hear the difference, okay? So just we listen to the first minute because I don't want to spoil your time, but you will have the chance later on to see the whole interview. So. This is the uncut version. Yeah, welcome again. Um, and on my right-hand side, a man who needs no introduction, but maybe we should explain what's your, the proper pronunciation of your name. This is Tobias. You might call him Tobias, but Tobias is a little bit more perfect. So how, Tobias, how is it? How does it feel to not be the man in charge? Well, pretty good, actually. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of still in charge for the opening, which is putting some pressure on my shoulders for now. But once that is lifted off my shoulders and I step down the stage tomorrow morning, I am more than excited to blend in with delegates and speakers and just enjoy the show, you know? <laughs> the first minute, more or less. And just uh, let's go to the end. Ah. They need to prep the room. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I guess you get an idea why I showed uh, this to you, right? If you think about this, will you see, do you want to see that on YouTube? No. Because I don't want to see the first seconds where we didn't start. We just sat down and I was uh, fiddling around with the microphone. <laughs> and at the end, um, it took some seconds to switch off the camera because that's the fun thing. Um, I did it on my own. I have no camera operator, so I need to switch on and off and stuff like that. So why is that interesting? Because this is simply an example. But if I um, watch the sessions that are recorded here, it is absolutely the same. The second that the recording started is, is not the second that the real session starts, because Speakers are running around, someone has a question, he's getting a drink, somewhat. Nobody ever knows when it's really started. So I really have to listen to the talk to find out, okay, then at minute two, it starts. And the same thing is true for the end. So in 90% of the, of the cases, I want to cut off the beginning and I want to cut off the end. So, and the way that I do it is, I create an Excel file from the program, from the schedule. You can do that with invoke rest method, you know. You can grab that from the rep service. And I just w watch the sessions, all of them, and I note where they start. That's it. So this is a, this is a lot of work. But again, I do not watch the whole session. This is the one thing that you will see how is that done technically. And the second thing is that you might have noticed that I speak into the microphone and I'm much louder than Tobias. But Tobias is a shy person, laid back, and he's much lower with his voice. <clears throat> when you see that on YouTube or anywhere, 
you want the voices to be on the same level. You want it equally loud. And this is the main point where our phonic becomes important in just a few seconds. So let's find out um, how can I cut the video. Now it gets technical. Uh, now it, we, we're, we're going to the technical stuff. This is a simplified script. I do, do not provide my scripts that I actually use. I recreated them to make them as understandable as possible. And what you see is there, I get a bunch of variables. And the first thing is that, of course, I need to know where is FFmpeg, where are all the tools, where is the video file, what is the name of the, uh, the new file that I create. And uh, take care, line seven, line eight, there is a start and an end. So that means I want to cut off the first eight seconds and I want to cut off the last, uh, the last seconds so that the whole video is six minutes and 16 seconds. So if I want to process that later on totally automatically, it would be easy to have a commandlet that displays the time that um, this video will um, play. And this is that I get MP4 duration. I will show you that in a minute. There's a commandlet that I wrote, pretty simple one. And now in line number 15, we start fiddling around with the FFmpeg suite. And now you see that the video that my iPhone provided is full HD with 60 frames per second. That is ridiculous. You can't see with your eyes 60 frames per second. So that we have to remove a lot of trash from that because we don't need it in that high quality. That's the reason. While in number 19, I tell FFmpeg that he will lower the quality to 30 frames per second and that it re-encodes it. And what you see now is that in line number 19, I call FFmpeg, which is a native command. Um, and because I want to be independent of the actual place where it is, I created a variable and I execute it. And if you ask me, you can. Of course, you can ask me later on uh, what all these parameters mean. I have to look it up. I once checked it out. What is the average quality that I want to achieve? And uh, then I hard-coded these items. Um, 23, for example, is just a number uh, which is an indicator for the quality. So uh, some of you may say, oh, 23, that is way too low. I always use 30, and, but I don't care. This is what I found out, which doesn't make any difference. So, and now you find out he's encoding. And as you can see, don't tell the people I'm cheating. I didn't really type that in. And, but I have a good reason for that. Do you have any idea how long does that take if I would run it now on my notebook? What you just saw was 20 times fast forward. Encoding of six minutes of video takes a huge amount of time. Because it's absolutely ridiculous what you get from a simple smartphone today. And I will show you now, because now, we're, now, we're, now we are done. And I will show you that these are the files that I created. I created that yesterday even in my hotel room. And it took some time. And now let's see what I did. The original uncut version is this. It is more than one gigabyte for six minutes of video footage. And this is the one that I just created from the screen recording. And this simply is 50 megabytes. And besides the fact that the quality is generally lower and I can upload it easily to YouTube, the next interesting thing is it's cut it. Shall we find out if that worked? You remember that in the uncut edition, um, I was just sitting down and stuff like that. And now take care what happens now. Yeah, welcome again. Um, and on my right-hand side, a man who needs no introduction, but maybe we should explain what's your, the proper pronunciation of your name. You enjoy the conference. I will. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. That's it. And exactly what you saw, this is the output. I didn't do here anything manual. So, so you get the idea. Um, I lower the resolution. I lower the quality to make it uh, useful in terms of uploading, and I will provide you links to an uncut, to the uncut version. And of course, uh, you will find that on YouTube after the session. We will publish it in a few minutes. 
And you can compare that on your own. If you think the quality is bad, send me an email. I would claim that you do not see a difference. But it's a huge difference if you do not publish six minutes of video footage. But think about it, four tracks, four days, and multiple slots every day. So that's it. Um, just a quick thing. Is that really PowerShell? Let us show you. Jein, we would say in Germany. Yes and no. Because there is nothing bad in executing native commands. You still can provide a lot of uh, PowerShell um, in terms of variables and all the other stuff, in terms of that little helpers. This is that get MP4 duration. And you will find out that I need PowerShell for one more thing. So stay tuned, I will show you. Um, but to be honest, if this would not be a PowerShell conference, if this would be a cmd.exe conference, or if this would be a Python conference, I can show you the same, of course. But just because I love PowerShell, I do not think that there is a problem with combining these two items. Uh, the real problem is, of course, there is no such thing as an FFmpeg module, and they will never provide it. Because if you start, for example, to grab the code and recreate it as a set of PowerShell commandlets, you uh, will have work for years, I'm sure, uh, if not for your lifetime. And the second that you think you're done, they changed it. So I don't think that there will ever be something like a commandlet, but of course we can wrap this into in our scripts, and this makes a ton of sense. Um, publishing, now we come to the interesting thing, because we, we're not having a, uh, a jingle we want to have something nice that you know, ah, that ludicrous music again. We're at the PowerShell conference at the YouTube channel. So let's talk about publishing. And now it's get really, really interesting because I don't want to fiddle around with YouTube. I don't want to say my real opinion about YouTube while I'm recorded. Um, I don't like YouTube. Um, but you have to meet expectations. If we put all the video stuff on some other platform, you will not find it. That's it. People look, they uh, look for the stuff on YouTube, so we have to put it on YouTube. That's it. We don't get money from them. Maybe we should. Uh, but we just click on these buttons that, no, we won't want money so that you don't get nagged with advertisements, hopefully. And the problem is that YouTube, because it belongs to Google, is pretty complicated in terms of web services because Google provides so much stuff, it's really hard to get into it. So I don't use YouTube directly. I use Auphonic. And I will show you why. And if my internet connection allows, I can show you this here in real life. This is the Auphonic website. And you can create presets in Auphonic. And the reason I do it is you will instantly understand why I do it like this when you look at the preset. Uh, Auphonic is a web service that allows you to upload audio files. This is the origin. And it's, in the meantime, it is also capable of handling video files. But Auphonic is about audio. And the reason why they started is that they want to improve the audio footage. They want to raise the voices, they want to remove the noise, and they want to do all the nice little things. So what Auphonic does, and I can configure it here in my preset, is simply that I, for example, say I want something like speech recognition. Um, and I upload the video file, and if my English wouldn't be so bad, then I get the transcription of uh, what's spoken on the video file. But this is just one little thing. The next thing is that um, I want to improve the audio. And this, what you see here below, this is the main approach of Auphonic. You have an adaptive leveler. You have a noise reduction. You set the overall tone um, of a defined level. This, for example, is very, very important. If you watch some old videos from the PowerShell conference and you switch between two sessions, you will see the one speaker is very loud and the other speaker is very, very low. And this is totally nagging. And this 
guarantees me that it is on a defined level. They process the audio, they analyze it, and they push it to what I configured here. And this is pretty loud. Um, if you want to provide music, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't use this. You would, you would use another value, but um, this value is perfectly appropriate from my point of view for podcasts and anything like that. And the next thing is that um, I can, beyond, um, beyond using uh, speech recognition and stuff like that, I can grab the files from any cloud provider. From OneDrive is also possible. I use Dropbox here. And I can also publish things to YouTube. So if you see it here, I just can click on that YouTube um, uh, item, and then it will automatically, if I want it to, it will automatically publish it to YouTube with some basic items here. You can create a no, comedy, for example. You can say this is public or it is unlisted. When I publish it, I always set it to unlisted so that Gail, for example, Tobias, or any other, um, any other who wants to watch it first can see if it's good enough and then publish it. So that, that's it. And the nice thing is that it is super easy because you have that services here and you connect, can connect to them all. And I really can recommend that. That is so much easier and you're the connecting the dots. And as you might think, this is the final thing that I will show you now in a minute. Of course, Auphonic has a web service. And now you know where the connecting, where's the connection between PowerShell and video processing because um, I don't want to edit it and I do not want to upload it one by one. I just want to have a script with invoke rest method and go. That's it. That's the reason why we're doing it like this. So let's find out how is that done. I show you the scripts. And again, the, the scripts that I put in my repo, they are meant to be understandable. They are very much simplified. I could create some fancy uh, PowerShell module with that, but it would make it a little bit hard to read. So for this purpose here, I try to make it as simple as possible so that you get the main aspect. So let's find out how does this look. Um, you already know this first script. Let's just have a look at the other ones and then we finalize it. Um, the next thing that you might want to do is you want to add an intro and an outro. And this, again, is pure black magic. Uh, if I zoom out here a little bit, you will see how ludicrous these FFmpeg calls are. Um, I zoom in a little bit. The second that I put it together, I tested it, and it works. I forget what is the meaning. So don't ask me. I have to look it up. But I can tell you that the line number two combinates, concatenates these three items. Dollar intro is my intro, dollar outro is my outro, dollar new file is the file that we just created, and we can combine it. And there are multiple filters, multiple ways to um, process it. For example, you might want, you might simply want to glue the files together without re-encoding. So for this one, the concat filter is perfect. But the problem is that you might have video footage with different quality levels, maybe uh, with different encodings, and uh, then you have to re-encode that all. So there are multiple ways to glue the files together. So, um, the next thing is that I want to talk to Auphonic. And of course, I have, as you just saw, I have an account there. The PSConf EU has an account there. We pay for that. And by the way, if he watches this, uh, thanks to Georg Holzmann, this is the man in charge, he gives us a very good prize. So thank you. Thank you, Alphonic. Um, this was the advertising blog. Um, but of course, I don't want to show you the password. You are very nice people, but someone on the video, on the internet. So I have to take care of my passwords. So this is the way that I handle passwords. I always store them as an encoded secure string in the registry. This is what I think is what I like. And I just wrote a little script. I put that also in the notes um, that creates um, the encoded string in my registry. And then later on, I can grab it from there and start the processing. So the next thing is that 
I will, of course, have to find out, does Auphonic speak to me in terms of invoke REST method, in terms of invoke web request, in terms of curl? And if you go to the website, by the way, this is just a placeholder, it's not the real password. Um, of course, they do not provide examples for PowerShell. Sadly, no one does. So you have to translate the examples that they provide, in this case, curl, it's always curl, isn't it? Um, to what you know, how it works in PowerShell. And this is pretty simple because curl and invoke web request and invoke rest method are so comparable that it's just a little translation. And you can try that on your own. As I said, um, they provide a free account, a little bit limited, and you can try it out if that works for you. And of course, you can write the, um, you can write it down here um, as plain text password, but in real life, I don't want that. So this is the, the same uh, with invoke rest method. And if we do it now live, it would be something like this. Now I have to get the real password and I read it from the registry with this. So I hope it worked. We will see now in a minute. And if I just want to find out if my internet connection works, this is live now, so I can't guarantee that it really works. Um, in terms of internet connection. This is the way that I talk to Auphonic. And as you see, it worked. Because what did I just show you here? Um, just a second. So no error message. And you see, I already tested that before. Of course I did. Um, what you just see are the presets from the previous conferences. So I now can clearly see that my account works, that I have the proper password, and so on, and so on. And the final thing is now that I want to publish it. And this is just a, a more or less, a, it's a, it's a one-liner. And then we're done. And then you can enjoy, hopefully you can enjoy the, the uh, video that you just saw in a perfect manner on YouTube. Um, besides the fact that they lower the quality again, but that's another issue. Um, this is everything I have to do to publish the video. Because everything that is more or less the same in one year of PowerShell conference is, is, is written down um, in the presets, and I just provide the items that are different. And in real life, I would take that from my Excel file that I told you before, that I create um, um, at the start. So that's simply it. And let's find out how that looks. Just a second. And as I told you, I did that before because it takes way too much time, uh, bes bes besides the fact that um, it is just a little bit smaller than the original file, it still takes, takes some time. And Auphonic have to do the magic about post-processing the audio and then publishing it to YouTube. And now you see that is what it looks like. So now we're up with the file to, uh, to the hands of Auphonic. And this is what it looks like, audio processing now. It's a screenshot. You get it because I did it up front. And uh, they do the speech recognition. I can download that later on. I can provide these files if you want to look at it, how good it is. Um, and of course, uh, because you're all Microsoft people, you're interested in Microsoft technology, you could do a lot of that in, uh, in the Azure world. You can do a lot of that with the Bing services. They also have um, provide uh, voice recognition um, and so on and so on. And uh, yeah, finally, this is what it looks like on YouTube. So, and they re-encode it again, and it sucks a lot, but uh, yeah, that's it, and we're done. And now, just because I cheated a little bit and I did that up front yesterday evening, this is the final video. Listen to the voices. Yeah, welcome again. Um, and on my right-hand side, a man who needs no introduction, but maybe we should explain what's your, the proper pronunciation of your name. This is Tobias. You might call him Tobias, but 
Tobias is a little bit more perfect. So how, Tobias, how is it? How does it feel to not be the man in charge? Well, pretty good, actually. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of still in charge for the opening, which is putting some pressure on my shoulders for now. But once that is lifted off my shoulders and I step down the stage tomorrow morning, I am more than excited to blend in with delegates and speakers and just enjoy the show, you know. <laughs> Bye-bye. This is what you do late in the evening after the uh, after the social event. This is what I did. Uh, Arena QMS is a true lifecycle management system that is better oh. than the typical document focused QMS solutions. Being yeah. able to manage YouTube advertisements. Okay, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. The jingles that you just showed, there is no such thing as a jingle for PowerShell Conference 2022. So I created a placeholder, what you just saw as the placeholder. I hope you like it. Um, and if someone is uh, creative and you know how to do some nice jingles and you want to do something for the community, feel free, feel invited to create something nice for us and I will put it there if uh, the organizers like it. I'm, I'm not the organizer of this event, I'm just a helping hand. And of course, um, people like Gail, um, he has to like it too, but uh, I'm, I'm confident that we will find something nice. And it's good as a placeholder, isn't it? And did you recognize how much louder the voices are? And on, a, on the same level, this is the magic of, uh, uh, of, of Onyx. So to me, and this is my final, uh, my final word, and you have one minute for questions. No. Um, I'd like to add one more little tiny uh, episode. Um, last year, I was able to improve the whole process. I tried the year before. Uh, but last year, I was pretty fast. And last year um, means 2019, before the coronavirus, so the last year of the conference. And when the conference in Hanover was over, I think it took me two or three days and everything was on YouTube and I was so proud. And I talked to Tobias and said, hey, Tobias, we can go live. Do you know what Tobias said? No, we don't. Because we have to create some, don't tell anyone, we have to create some tension. And that is the reason why it took weeks until you saw the videos, because we decided, he decided to publish it one by one. I was so proud that it just took two or three days that we got. So keep that in mind. If the videos do not show up on time, it might be to create some tension. So I hope you find it useful. Catch me on the floor. If you have any questions, please feel free. If you want to add something, your experience with FFmpeg or any other useful tool, feel free. And yeah, safe travels home. And it's great that you're here. Thank you. And I got swag. Any questions or comments? Anything that you, maybe you did with that? Yeah. With uh, which software did you record your screen sessions? Yes. Um, the question was which, uh, which, re, um, <laughs> which software did I use to record uh, the screen? Simply Camtasia. You can use a lot of things. I, I use Camtasia because I like it in terms of editing. But you can also use, for example, PowerPoint. Few people do know that. PowerPoint is, is able to create screen recordings, and it's not bad. And of course, OBS is very, very good in screen recording, and there's so many more. So if you want to look for a free tool, I would recommend PowerPoint because you have it. And um, if you want a really good tool, use OBS. And if you want to pay for software Camtasia, I think it's okay. Any other recommendations from the community? From you? You, you use Camtasia also, right? No? There are so many tools, but some of them uh, create huge files. That's sometimes a problem. And I do prefer a tool that does not create uh, video files with uh, such an immense uh, amount of data. So I like it when it's uh, 
um, when it's encoded in H264. Uh, so th that's another thing, maybe for the, for the ones uh, that want to speak at conferences. Um, forget about that ludicrous 4K, 8K, forget about that. Um, we have a policy, everything is full HD, 1920 by 1080. I only buy, no, I'm not kidding, I only buy notebooks with that screen resolution. I would never buy such a thing with 4K screen resolution if I can, if they, if they have a model that suits my needs. Um, so only full HD and um, I always encode in uh, H264. H265 is much better, but it again, it needs more CPU power. So maybe we will switch in future time, maybe we will switch to 4K and maybe we'll use another encoder. But right now, I think full HD is absolutely appropriate. Any more recommendations? Any more tools? Processing video. Pardon me? For processing video, it's a book review. I have not understood that. Adobe. Processing video, Adobe Premiere. Adobe. Ah, Adobe Pre Ah, okay. Um, there was a recommendation. Yeah, Adobe Premiere. Is that the name of the software? Sorry, I couldn't understand you. Um, I'm an I'm an old guy. I don't hear that well. Um, yeah, Adobe Premiere is a, is a, a very popular tool, um, but it costs money, right? So you need that creative. Yeah, you need that creative bundle. So, yeah. Any more question recommendations? So, grab your swag, safe travels. See you hopefully next year somewhere. And enjoy the video uh, from Tobias, the interview. Uh, as you saw, it's on, on YouTube, and I will publish it right now. I will let you can see it uh, without the direct link. So, thank you. Thank you.